Welcome back, everybody. This is another episode of Boot Camp for Combat by Compass Games and Ross Mortel. I'm Cliff, a.k.a. We Beasties. And I just want to make a quick video this time. Should be mercifully short. Covering the dice that are used in the Combat Game series and the rules of 0 and 9 that pertain to these dice. Now in combat, there are relatively few dice used, but you use them a lot. The simplest is, well, you can have a d6. We're all familiar with d6. These are used primarily for scatter of things like artillery or of flares during play. Wind direction, so directionality based on the compass marker on the map. In volume 2, the d6 is also used as a d3 sometimes, where 1, 2 will count as a 1, 3, 4 counts as a 2, 5, 6 count as a 3. So this is going to act both as a d6 and a d3, and you won't use it as much. The die that you'll be using a lot have 10 sides. These are not d10s. These are decimal dice. As Ross points out correctly in the beginning of the rules for Volume 1, these go from 0 to 9, not 10. Some people I've seen online get a little bent out of shape by this because they're used to games incorrectly assigning the value of 10 to 0. These are not d10s. If you want to have a d10, that's fine if you're playing a different game. Games that ship you a decimal die and say you'll just count 0 as 10, technically not right, and it's always bothered me. If you want a d10, buy a d10. I mean, you're paying 50 or 100 bucks for a game, they can't spend a few pennies to send you the right dice. Anyway, I rant. You know that this has to be a zero, because if you're going to roll two die in combat, usually you'll be rolling one decimal die, and you get a value between zero and nine. As a general rule, zeros are a very good thing when you're rolling for the friendly player. Sometimes, rarely, they're not so great, but almost always zero is a great thing. Nines bite almost universally in this game. You don't want to be rolling nines, and I roll more than my share of nines. Sometimes you roll two of these to get a number out of 100, 0 to 99. That's how you know that this has to be a 0. If you roll this as your 10's place, and this is your 1's place, you roll 0, 9, that's 9. If I roll 0, 0, and they say, now this is 100, that means you're counting this as a 10. It used to be a 0, now it's a 10. How can it be a 0 and a 10? It can't. 0, 0 is 0. 0 is 0, 10 is 10. I mean, come on, people. We've been using Hindu Arabic numerals for over a millennium now. After a thousand years, you'd think people would kind of pick up on the concept. All right, that's my die rant for the day. I feel better now. Um, we're going to move on to talk about the rules of 0 and 9 now at the extreme values of these 10-sided die. Okay, so now it's time to talk about the rules of 0 and 9. The rule of 0 should not be confused with rule 0. Rule 0 is something I learned playing Dungeons & Dragons back in the 1980s. That is, in any game, the GM is always right. Or, in terms of combat, Ross is right. So if I ever say anything and Ross contradicts me, Ross is right. I'm not. I'll try to do my best to be correct, but I make mistakes too. So what is the rule of zero then? Well, the rule of zero has to do with those ten-sided decimal dice going from zero to nine. 
there's a 10% chance that you're going to roll a zero at any time. It seems like less when you're rolling, but there's always a 10% chance. It's possible for the odds to be less than 10% and still be successful with the rule of zero. So these are cases where you'd actually need a negative number in order to be successful. Let's consider the board here where we've got Private Brubaker trying to spot this soldier over in the long grass at 6.03. And we've got some smoke intervening here. So we've got a open line of sight. Let's check our line of sight. Yes, the line of sight is clear and it's going through the smoke. Now, when we're spotting, we use the TQ value, which is five for Brubaker. Distance here is one, two, three, four, five. So with our spotting, let's get my spotting table over here for you to see. Spotting range of five, modifier zero, so we still have five. And we've got evading in long grass, evading spotting in long grass is a zero. And we've got intervening smokes. We've got five minus zero minus zero minus four for the smoke, that's one, zero, one. would be a successful roll. Don't need a, don't need to consider the rule of zero at this point. What if this guy was not evading? What if well, I just took him off, didn't I? Let's put back on another one. Let me just undo that. All right. Let's say that he was sneaking instead. Sneaking in the long grass. Sneaking in the long grass is minus one. All right. And let's back him off to be range of six. No, five to 10 is zero, so we're fine. We'll leave that. Let's just give him a wound. We will wound you with a light wound. That's going to be a minus one to his TQ. Five minus one is four. This is a minus one that makes three. And minus four would make minus one. So it's a minus one roll to spot. In that case, Brewbreaker now needs to roll a zero. And then, because the minus one is left, you take the minus one away from the five TQ, and you'd have to roll a four on his second roll. So I'd have to roll a D10, and I don't get my zero. But if I did get a zero, you see how often zero is, there's a zero, and he'd have to get a four or less on his second, and he still didn't spot. He got a zero eight. He'd have to get a zero and a four or less. The same thing is true of firing. In this case, you'd use your weapon skill for your initial fire attempt. And if you needed like a negative one to hit with firing, then you would try and you have to roll a zero on your fire attempt. And the negative one would still apply to the TQ on the rule of zero roll. So you have to take into account all of the modifiers for either spotting or firing. If it's a negative number, that negative gets applied to the TQ value for a follow-up roll if and only if you manage to roll a zero on the first roll. That is the rule of zero in a nutshell. It allows you to get a lower percentage shot. So if you needed, like in our case, a four or less on the follow-up, that's a 50% chance. Off of a 10%, so you have a 5% overall chance of hitting. Now, what's the rule of nine? Nines always bite. Nine is always a miss. It doesn't matter what kind of modifiers you have. So if I had this guy here in the open, and let's take that sneak off 
Let's give him a sprint. So he's sprinting in the open one hex away. And he, we're trying to spot him with Corporal Thomas with a 7 TQ. Sprinting. Here we are. Sprinting in the open is a plus 2. And our distance is 1. So that's another plus 2. So that's plus 4. Here we have a 7, plus 2, plus 2, that's an 11. Even if you got an 11, if you roll a 9, you don't see him. 9 is always unsuccessful for spotting or for firing. You cannot get above it. There's always going to be a 10% chance that something is just going to go sideways for you. So 9 always misses. Zero doesn't always hit. Sometimes you need extra help. It's also possible to be so far negative that it's impossible even for the second roll to help you out. At that point, it's just impossible. So if I had like a four and it was negative four, negative five even, let's say negative five and I have a four, I wouldn't be able to make it with the second zero. So there'd be a 0% chance of me being successful. I hope that helps. The rule of zero got a little messed up in the rule book. The figure isn't quite right. It's not that difficult. It's kind of a cool little way of getting below a 10% chance, but yet still be successful. Usually you're pretty desperate at that point. And nine is always a miss. It's that easy. In the next video, we're going to move on to actually calculating the die roll necessary to do spotting. I'll catch you guys then.